So we've successfully rendered one component to the browser window. But of course, a React application can have multiple components. So let's make another one. And what I'm going to do is create a new component that just writes a footer to the page. OK? And it's a simple exercise. We'll be modifying this as time goes on. But we need to get used to working with components. So right in our source folder, I'm going to create another file in here. So I'll create another file, new file. And I will call it app footer, app footer.js. And inside of that, I'll import React, import React. And I'll also import component from React. And I'll create a class. But this time, I'm going to use the keyword export. And I'll use the keyword default class. So I'm creating a class that automatically exports itself when it's called. And I'll call it app footer. And as was the case with our other component, this one extends component. Now, if, if you'll recall, every component in React must have a method or a function called render. So let's create that render. And we'll return some HTML, or actually return some XML, some JSX. And this time, I'll surround everything with parentheses. It just makes it a little more attractive. So what do I want to return here? Well, I want to return a horizontal rule. And you would think, since this is HTML, I could just do this. But you'll notice how my IDE automatically added a closing HR tag. Well, if you're familiar with HTML, HR actually doesn't require a closing tag. It's one of a very few uh, HTML directives that doesn't have a closing tag. But we're not returning strict HTML. We're returning XML. And XML requires that all things have closing tags. So I can fix it like that. So now I'm returning a horizontal rule. And now I'll return a paragraph that just says something like copyright. And I'll put the copyright symbol. And then the year. And then some company. Acme Limited. Okay. Now my IDE is helpfully telling me this is an error. And this is, again, it looks like valid HTML. You're allowed to have the slash before the closing pointy bracket on an HR tag. But why is this throwing an error? This seems like valid HTML. Well, it is valid HTML, but it's not valid XML. And I need to surround this entire selection of HTML with some kind of tag. And of course, I could put a div around it, but that might actually break the presentation. So I'm going to go back up to line one, and I'm going to import something else from React. And I'm importing something called fragment. And down here, inside my return, I'm going to have the opening tag, fragment. And then I'll move the closing tag down here to the end. And this is a special thing available to us in React that actually makes us have valid XML. It now has an opening and closing tag, so it's valid XML. But the fragment itself will never be generated as HTML. So it's just something created by React that allows us to uh, write our return statement properly. OK, so here we have a new class called app footer that actually returns uh, some HTML that we can include in our main page. So let's go back to our index.js file, and let's import this file. And we'll import it by saying import app footer from, and this is not built into React, so I need to specify the path name to it. And I just use dot for the current directory, slash app footer, and give it a trailing semicolon. And now I can put that anywhere I want inside of my render statement. So again, I'm going to make this a little more attractive by putting parentheses here and a closing parentheses right here. And that looks a little bit better. I'll tab this over. And where do I want to put this? Well, I can put it, say, right here. Let's see if this works. I'm going to import it by saying app footer, like that. And again, I have my error. And my error is, once again, I need to have one root level tag that surrounds everything I'm returning. So in this case, I can just say div and take this closing div and move it down here and hit return. And I'll just tab everything over so it's a little more attractive. And that should work fine. Now, I don't believe 
I have my application running. So let me run it. npm start. And I'll switch to my web browser. And there it is. So now I have both hello world and a horizontal rule and my copyright statement. Okay, one other thing we can change here. Let me just hide this. And go back to my app footer JS. I don't want to go back and modify my code every time the year changes. So let's instead make that year a variable. So inside the render statement, let's just create a constant const current year, and I'll make that equal to a new date dot get full year. So I have this variable. How do I use that down here? Well, the syntax for using a variable in the fragment or the HTML you're returning is very straightforward. In curly braces, put in the name of the variable you want. Now, if I save that, get rid of this S, save that, and switch back to my web browser. There it is. Once again, it looks exactly the same, but now that it's dynamically generated and will update every time the year updates. So we'll go back here and just to show you that it actually is changing, I'll put say 2020 dash and save and switch back. And there it is, modified. All right, so now we have on our index.js, we actually have our hello world being rendered as part of our main return statement. We're including a second component in this component. And presumably, you can see how we're going to start building things in React. We'll have a, a library of components, reusable components, that we can incorporate into any page we want to create in our application. So this is a good start. In the next lecture, we'll start styling things and make things just a little bit more attractive.